When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to another past HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this past HC exam question, which comes from the theory of bases and acids chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once you read the question, get about 5 seconds of pause video. And then once you pause the video, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready. The first question says, define the term amphiophrotic, which is with one mark. And the second part, B, write two chemical equations to show that the dihydrogen phosphate ion H2PO4- minus is amphiophrotic. And sort of two marks. So when you're ready, pause the video, and attempt the question. Welcome back. Right, so for, for defining the term amphiophrotic, what you should do is you should realize it's only with one mark, which means you basically have to tell the marker that it's all about them acting either as acids or bases, and then what that means, so that they can either accept or donate electron, uh, protons, but it's also important that you say when that happens, so depending on what solution they're in, right, that's also important, so depending on the solution. If they're in an acidic solution, they would um, do, pro, they would accept, and if they're in a, in a basic solution, they would donate. So what I wrote is, oops, the an amphiophrotic substance can either accept or donate a proton, depending on the solution it is in. It can either act as a base or an acid. And that's a quick definition, and because it's only worth one mark, that's all you have to do—a quick definition. And for the second part, it says write two chemical equations. So obviously you need to write two chemical equations to show that the dihydrogen phosphate ions H2PO4- minus is amphiophrotic. In this case, what I would recommend is you simply quickly write it, the actual equation, but maybe you give a quick explanation as well. So a quick explanation, and then you write the actual equation. So what I did was, if the dihydrogen phosphate ion is placed in an acidic solution, it will act as a base and accept a proton from the hydronium ion. And then I wrote the equation, H2PO4- minus plus H3O, both an aqueous solution, going into H3PO4 plus H2O. Now the H3PO4 is aqueous and the H2O is liquid. So here you can see it said uh, if they're in an acidic solution, that so the hydronium ion is acidic. I forgot to write the plus then it will act as a base, and this acts as a base, which means it will accept a hydrogen from here, and thereby become H3PO4, and the actual hydronium ion will turn into water, because this has donated its proton, and therefore the dihydrogen phosphate ion has acted as a base by accepting a proton. That's the first one, and then you obviously go the other scenario, when it's in base exclusion. If dihydrogen phosphate ion is placed in a basic solution, it will act as an acid and donate a proton to the hydroxyl ion. So here we have our same with dihydrogen phosphate ion. We've got our hydroxyl ion, which means it's, that that's the basic solution. Once everything is changed into the reaction, we have a hydrogen phosphate ion, which has donated its proton, and we have water. That water is formed because the OH, which is acting as a base, has accepted the proton from the acid behaving hydrogen, dihydrogen phosphate ion. In this case, this here is our acid, and this here is our base. And in the other example, this was our base, and this was our acid. So by showing those equations, you can see they can either act as a base or an acid, depending on what kind of solution they were in. And that was worth one mark for the top and one mark for the bottom. It's worth two marks out of two, and the whole thing is worth three marks out of three, and it came from this substop point. Identify amphiophrotic substances and construct equations. So it's saying we should need to know these equations to describe their behavior in acidic or basic solutions. Basically, that's the actual of those two questions. But I hope that's useful. Thank you for watching.